Okay. You don't look at the chat, Luke. Oh, sorry. Stop yep. looking at the chat. Sorry. Don't look at the chat. I didn't, I didn't ruin see everything yet. You'll ruin I, it I all. think I should just close it. I'm just going to close it. I can open it mid-show. Boom, gone. The selected um, hello, hello, is hello, not hello. unchecked. And we're live. Welcome to the WAN show, ladies and dicks show. Like, we are live, Hello. so I guess uh, real later because we accidentally went live on all platforms <laughs> by accident. <laughs> Topic okay. today, we weren't quite ready to start. Google latest to join the iFixit party, providing parts oh. and tools for self repair. Pretty freaking big deal. In other news, AMD accidentally gave you more gigahertz for free. It or not. My uh, my doc just got signed out, but I believe I remember some ubiquity sues Kreb from Krebs on mm. Security. That's cool. mm. um, uh, another topic. Oh, so un <laughs> thank you, Lou. Not signed out. I don't remember. What Elon it was. Musk spent three billion dollars for a nine point two percent stake in Twitter, becoming an instant board member. Note. This is kind of political because of how and why it's claimed that this happened. Sorry. Signed. So that later. I Let's roll that. that intro. Yeah. Did the All right, rock on. Uh, a problem says stream is real broken. What's going on? Stream uh, broken YouTube. Everything broken. Desync apparently. What? What desync? Chugging. What desync? What's chugging? It's chugging. Oh, it is chugging. It's chugging. Why is it chugging? We're using hundred percent of our network. Well, uh, but the, uh, what? It says encoding overloaded. Apparently the encoding is overloaded. Never ran into this before. I'm going to Google live with everyone else on the WAN show about what the heck that means. All right. Woo. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. We'll figure it out another we'll figure time. it out another time. Yeah. Whew. Let's jump right into our first topic. Shall and we? we're back. Yeah. <laughs> what Google are we going for? joins the okay. iFixit party, providing parts and tools for self repair. Not to be outdone by rivals Apple and Samsung, Google has partnered with iFixit to provide not just self-repair parts, but tools and guides. The devices that will be supported are all Pixel phones from the Pixel 2 through the Pixel 6 Pro, along with a commitment to support future Pixel models. And this is a particularly big deal for Pixel owners because Pixels break all the time. Oh yeah. I mean, Luke, You've had personal experience with Pixel phones breaking and being if, just perpetually broken. If my screen is on for any amount of time, the top drag down menu will just randomly come down over and over and over again. Rock on, brother! Yeah! You want to see your notification? Do you want to see your notification? What? Want to see your notifications? How that, about now? That's my phone. I feel like I'm conversing with my phone right now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I've had ever since Pixel 2, every version after that, I've had tons of problems with every phone that I've had, unfortunately. Um, also, just right to repair support in general is a fantastic thing to see. I know. It's, Very happy. It's fantastic. I think it's been on a tear just getting all these different companies to join with their general program. Credit I'm to other advocates to like Lewis Rossman. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's absolutely incredible. It's it's frustrating. Strides. It's frustrating that it took this long and it's frustrating that it took so many people shouting so loudly about something so obvious. Yeah. But it feels like the ball is actually moving yeah like especially over the last few months i think of its own accord yeah to the point where we might actually have dare i say it some momentum yeah yeah there's been some really significant companies joining on i didn't really see this one coming to be completely honest i didn't think google was going to jump on this but i'm really stoked that they did each kit comes with an eye opener tool pre-cut adhesives to restore water resistance, and the appropriate spudgers, picks, tweezers, precision dr bit drivers, and suction cups that you need to get the job done. The repair program launches later this year with no set availability date. And there's a discussion question of, is there any downside to this whatsoever? 
Um, no, I don't think we need to discuss that too much. And the next question is who's next? Um, Oh, wow. I mean, I don't, we, we're a software company. I don't think we'd be able to. Oh, no, there's nothing we can do about it right now. Okay. We are live. So they're going to have to flip over to one of the other services if it's not working properly. Okay. Uh, I already said that in the chat. <clears throat> okay. So who's uh, but, next? Yeah. I mean, at this point, I'd love to see Sony step in oh, that'd be with, fantastic. for game consoles. Yeah. That would be that a big would be deal? particularly cool because of, um, I believe it was a right to repair video, and the guy used a, a stack of PlayStations as his example of why right to repair should exist. Because he was like this gigantic tower of PlayStations with like minor problems can't be fixed. Can't be fixed. So yeah, that would be great. That's actually a really good example. That'd be huge. I my, mean, my Nintendo was, will never do it. No, because they just don't care about anything other than you buying Nintendo. Yep. That's it. Yep. Um, yeah, per personally, like there's, there's some, I think Sony is a fantastic answer to be honest though, just anyone just get more mass in this, yeah. in this program, just anybody that could potentially benefit from it, I think would be great. I mean, who would you want to see? Like to me, Sony is a big one just because of the sheer volume of e-waste that gets produced every time we move to a new generation of console and people just start discarding their old ones um hp dell yeah yeah Ma i mean mass laptop look i mean dell made all that noise about their sustainable what was it project luna i want to say it was a little weird i, it, I forget it what felt it, like posturing yeah I, I it felt a lot like posturing and now there's just no excuse yeah i feel like in discussing any Coming laptop up, thing i should bring up shareholder Fair. framework uh but Absolutely everyone should be doing it. HP yeah. does a relatively good job, actually. They provide a lot of documentation on their own, not even through third parties. Which is completely fine. To Which be clear, is totally you fine. don't have to join iFixit. Absolutely That's not. That's not necessarily, like, it's, it's, a, it's a win right now when companies do, because yes. iFixit is handling a lot of it. But if you want to create just as good of a program in regards to offering um, repair guides, repair parts, tools, etc., to your customers, great. It, it does it does not need to go through iFixit. I'm happy that iFixit is facilitating all this kind of stuff, and I'm happy when people join, but it is absolutely not the only way to get this done. If your company's like, no, we have to keep things in-house, that's fine. Um, just do it. Just do it then. Yeah. Any other, like, monstrous tech companies that we'd want to see jump on? Oh. I mean, okay, uh, here's another example of... I mean, I guess people don't really repair, like, a, a wireless router... Yeah, okay. Uh, I mean... I haven't seen that many, like, break, you know? Yeah. Generally, they've been... Well, I, I wasn't going to... I was going to say, generally, they've been very reliable. No, no, uh, reliable is not the word that I would use, but <laughs> generally, they work as well five years in as they did when they started. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good, that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> There's nothing necessarily to fix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just broken yeah. from the get-go. <laughs> Yeah, you have um, to do initial improvements. On the subject of repairing things, guess what I have here with me? You asked me what this box was. Oh, that this, wasn't even the box I was talking about, but I'm oh, so excited. This is Sarah's handcrafted, painstakingly crafted retail packaging for the screwdriver. Oh, wow. You will be the first to unbox it, Luke. So cool. You want to okay. you can you can read the thing on the on back the, on and the everything. back it says this this is the screwdriver we're always... He can read. Weave. Is there a typo? No, weave. I dyslexia the heck out of it. Oh. It's on me. Jeez. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how many of these we've printed yet. <laughs> this is the screwdriver we've always wanted. With Megapro's retractable bit cartridge and our own shape, feel, and finish. It's the best of what we saw in the existing screwdriver space. We spared no expense in trying to make the perfect multi-bit screwdriver for everyone. Whether you're a PC enthusiast, a handy person, or just someone who appreciates quality products that last for years. We are confident that this will be your go-to driver for years to come. Thank you so much for supporting this new project with us. We hope you love it as much as we do. And then Linus Sebastian in text and Linus Sebastian in, in, in signing. And it also shows the bits that it comes with. Although you can buy the bit driver packs if you want more, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So you're going to open it? Yeah. You're going to open it? 
On the front, it also shows the bits in spot again. gloss. Sarah is a big fan of spot gloss, so, so it's that's, like that's like the. I don't know if they can really see it. Yeah, it's hard to catch. You have to kind of catch it in the light. Yeah, I'm trying, but I can't tell. Um, but yeah, you can see like an outline of the screwdriver and stuff. We really have spared no expense. Trust Ooh, me. Ooh, this is actually pretty cool. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> I always like orange insides. As you can see things. There's another what looks like spot gloss diagram of the uh, of the internals of the screwdriver this time. And with the bit load again. Would you like to hear the Ooh. notification sign up numbers? That's not final. That's not final. Ignore that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The ratchet is that ratchet's not final. There's still there's still some stuff to be done there. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it, guys. I'm not gonna tell you stuff's done if it's not. It's not quite done. Uh, would you like to hear the latest numbers for signups though? Yes. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if I should be terrified in a good or bad way. It's at the point now where both of them are looking like they could be a bit of a problem in terms of fulfillment <laughs> at the beginning. The screwdriver has a total of just shy of 60,000 notification signups for when it comes in stock. <laughs> so oh given that we were hoping to press go when we had 30,000 in stock, <laughs> thinking that that would last until our next shipment would hit us, we're actually considering delaying general availability um it may be that on the first shipment the only way to get one will be to be signed up for the notification list because a lot of these people won't go through right away yeah but i suspect more than 50 percent will it'll be a lot of them yeah. so you are gonna want to get signed up if you want to get one and for the backpack uh we are at thirty-three thousand signups our first shipment of backpacks is 10,000. Basically, <laughs> uh, if you have not oh, yet signed boy. up for a notification, you are not getting one no, in the first, first shipment. Wave. Yeah. And if you don't sign up for a notification now, you will not get one in the second wave. You will be waiting a while. Neither of these are like exclusive productions and stuff. So if you don't get it, it's okay. You can get it later. We will make more. Yeah. But the longer the wait lists get, the longer it will take because, I mean, honestly, this is something we've talked about a fair bit on The WAN Show and I've talked about a lot internally lately. We are very cash flow limited right now. For the first time, I think, since probably the first couple of years, we are our growth is limited by how much cash we can deploy at the moment. It's all out there. And there's just... Um, I mean, there's... I guess there's... A, oh, man. Should I, should, I, should I break the news? Which one? Uh, the the one the one down the road. Uh, I think that one's probably okay. Should I break the news? I think yeah. Okay. What little do people internally know this? Some do. What little <laughs> okay. cash Yvonne and I had left for business development and expenses that maybe we would put into we actually wanted to add another production of backpacks so we, we have three runs that are already booked and we wanted to book a fourth uh but it may no longer be possible because do you guys remember how when we announced the lab i called it lab one well i think i said explicitly at the time it was called lab one because i knew that it wasn't going to be the the lab yeah. It was lab one, and there would be other uh, more different lab or labs. We put an offer on lab two. Yeah. Lab two is lab over five two, times three, the four. size yeah, five. of <laughs> lab one. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a big boy. <laughs> it's a chungus, chungus, chungus boy. So basically what I think is going to be happening sometime over the next six months is we are going to have to do some serious reshuffling internally of our departments um, in order to try to optimize keeping Where, people as close as yeah. possible to their reporting lines and making sure that everything runs as smoothly as as possible as we aggressively grow going into the latter half of 2022 and 2023. So we are doubling our footprint, um, meaning that, guys, 
need you to buy some screwdrivers and backpacks. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Speaking gotta, of which, should we talk about the pre-order thing? I got to be honest with you. Uh, we had a serious conversation internally about opening up pre-orders. Uh, one of the ideas that we had was opening up pre-orders to float plane subscribers only. Uh, this has two benefits for us as a business. Number one is if there's people that are really eager to get their hands on the screwdriver or backpack and they want to be absolutely first, it incentivizes them to sign up for float plane which helps us at a time that we're we're cash limited right now and number two is that it means that the people who are pre-ordering are the ones that are more likely to understand if there's a delay or a miscommunication or or something that any any small stumble in the lead up to actually shipping these products float plane is unanimously like Pre-order now. Take my money. Yeah, well, I know. I know that's what you guys would say, which is why we considered <laughs> opening them up to you guys. But the problem is that... Actually, it was Yvonne who was like, you can't do that. Even though she's the money person here, right? She was like, dude, you said you're not going to do it. At this point, it's not about money. It's about... Is your word worth anything or not? <laughs> yeah, we, we tried to do some stuff knowing that where like we decided that we would technically get like one of the plans was, okay, if they are a Flowplane subscriber and they buy the screwdriver at normal cost, they get like free Flowplane months, like one or yeah, two like, Flowplane uh, months. It was going to be somewhere between one and two because the system was going to be way easier to build yeah. if we just didn't care when someone's billing cycle was. Yeah, We promised a month. And then it was just, it could be up to almost two, but like, yeah. it'll just be whatever's left of this billing cycle plus the next one. So we were trying to make it like yeah. <laughs> less, I guess, predatory that way because we, we, we were worried about people being like, oh, you guys condemned the Best Buy thing. And we were going to be like, well, yeah, but this one, like, I don't know. It's not the same for like a bunch of reasons and stuff. But ultimately, yeah, I think Yvonne was right. She's right. She's right. We can't com we can't compromise the principles because if we compromise on <clears throat> our don't pre-order principles, then it means that we are compromising. It, you know, people might think, okay, maybe they compromised on the quality of the product then. Right? So, yeah. nope. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that we will never open up pre-orders of any form ever. I think that what Valve did with the Steam Deck is really smart, where they had people pay a small amount of money to reserve because you want to know how many to make and it's really challenging if it's as simple as just signing up for an email i don't, I don't know what your commit level is right so that that sixty thousand or that thirty five thousand that could mean anywhere from one to sixty thousand people are, are going to buy them there could be a ton of people who didn't sign up think like we, we we can't actually build projections based on this stuff um, so I think that exploring something like that in the future might be okay. I think that if we were to do a product that's more iterative, I would be potentially comfortable pre-selling it. Like maybe we do a different colorway of the backpack, for example. Like we do a, we want to do a limited edition colorway and it's like, guys, look, it's, it, it's the same backpack that you know and love. That almost sounds like a, like a print to order situation. But in blue. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, pre-order it. We'll do a run at the factory. Here we go. Yeah, you know, right? Like, the, I, I think there's situations where it might be okay. I think that once we once we're farther down a path where we've got this this consistency in our in our delivery, and maybe when the world's <laughs> and logistics are not such that it could be anywhere between a month to four months from now. I don't know. Right. <laughs> If we have some idea when things will actually arrive, I think the situation could change. But as it stands right now, I'm not comfortable enough to to take the money. So things are going to be really tight for us probably for about the next four to six months. After that, our hope is that these products are going to be crazy hyper successful and we're going to we're going to be sort of laughing about yeah. yeah we're going to be laughing about <laughs> q2 2022 remember that <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah sorry if if you're done there i want to be able to open flow plane chat so you got to tell me about what's on the store oh yes we do have a new product <laughs> i can't monitor chat right now all right me. this is one of those things that is the result of nick and i just having like 
hot conversation. <laughs> like, uh, he sent me over this thing that's like, holy crap. Okay, A, shout out our community. You guys have been amazing. The LTTstore.com artwork on r slash place came in number six and seven for the most edited pixels over the course of the entire campaign. <laughs> and it was all due to the war oh, between yeah. LTTstore.com and LTTstore.com. So, oh my to God. celebrate <laughs> this epic battle, we've created a limited edition shirt <laughs> where the red outline <laughs> it represents one <laughs> and the blue outline represents the other. <laughs> it's intentionally a little subtle, okay? Yeah. To make sure that it's something you can actually <laughs> wear out in public. Oh my goodness. But it absolutely pays homage to both sides. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like there were really good people on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. It's a, that's a dated reference at this point, thankfully. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there it is. The LTT Store Place t-shirt. This is a pre-sale, guys. So pre-sale, but it, not really a pre-order because we are only printing the exact number of these that you lot actually order. Uh, we are expecting them to ship by April 25th. These shirts are in stock. It's just a matter of working with our local printing partner to get them all printed up. If you order multiple items, your whole order will be held until the shirt is printed. This is to save you and me on shipping costs. Why are we enriching FedEx and UPS and USPS and all the shipping companies for no freaking reason? We're not going to do that. We'll ship the whole thing together, not to mention burning extra fuel. Yeah. Um, so this is it. Immortalize the epic dot com versus dot com battle of our slash plays 2022. We somehow managed to secure a top 10 spot in the most contested pixels, all thanks to our utterly incredible community. <laughs> As for as for the, the the shilliness, we've got people in float plane chat talking about it. The shilliness of wearing an LTTstore.com shirt. You know what? Honestly, that's the reason we've never done it. I, I I've 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 had it pitched to me many times, and I've opposed it every time. I've been like, look, you know, I it, it just it just feels like kind of taking the piss. Um, but the reality of it is, this community built that. I'm okay. Fine, I'll finally do it. I'll find because there's also like it's actually asked super it. normal. Um, like I don't know how else to say this, but a lot of times when you buy just a shirt from a store in a mall, it's just the store's logo. But the dot com part is yeah. like, but it also wouldn't That's be fair. it wouldn't be about this moment if you didn't have dot com dot com in it. Like it, maybe we do an LTT store shirt at some point. I don't know LTT store or printing across the front, but I don't think we'd put the dot com. You know, like, uh, I'm being asked: Are they the new LTT shirts or are they American Apparel? I believe they are American Apparel. We are moving through the rest of our American Apparel stock, and then we're going to switch everything over to LTT shirts moving forward. Now that we've seen the outstanding reception to our own shirts, so. This will be one of the last shirts that we do exclusively in American Apparel, and it'll probably switch over sometime after this. The reality of it is we didn't probably order enough of the custom ones to even do a limited edition drop like this because uh, we just wanted to make sure that in mass production they were still going to be good. I don't know how long we are leaving this up for sale, but I think Nick and I had talked about like 24 hours. Maybe I'll tell you what, let's give it till the end of the weekend. We'll go till Sunday night, give you guys a chance to get in there. But let's get it, uh, let's get it going. Let's get it going. Cool. Awesome. All right. We should probably do like another good discussion topic, maybe. Yeah, we did. We did one. All we right. At least one. Why don't we talk about the ubiquity scandal? Want to walk us through that? Yeah, let's uh, let me go find it really quick. Ubiquity sues Brian Krebs from Krebs on security. This was actually defamation. last week, but we yes. missed it. And that was not intentional. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> so it's not a word. That wasn't intentional either. <laughs> not, a, not a word. Just, just low key huck my phone at my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh yeah we didn't intentionally skip it just the show went on for like i think it was like almost two and a half hours or something so we decided to bail um which i don't have anything to do tonight so let's rock out let's hang out for, let's do a four-hour stream um anyways ubiquity sues brian krebs uh on tuesday ubiquity fired a defamation tuesday last filed week. a defamation lawsuit against brian krebs writer slash owner of krebs on security uh which if you're into security you've probably heard of over his coverage of a data breach from 2021 which ended up being the work of a company insider Mm. Pretty crazy. Apparently, the backstory is in January of 2021, Ubiquity disclosed uh, a data breach that they said was minor and had occurred at a third party cloud provider. Mm. Um, at the end of March, with information provided by, in quotes, a source who participated in the response, Krebs reported that the breach was much worse than what was disclosed. And then in December of 2021, the federal prosecutors uh, indicted Nicholas Sharp a senior developer and alleged member of the forensic investigation team accusing him of causing the breach and extorting ubiquity to pay a ransom of 25 Bitcoin to prevent the info from getting posted online. Krebs included in his December mm. follow-up piece that prosecutors said that Sharp caused false or misleading news stories to be published about the incident. Ubiquity takes issue with that particular piece. Interesting. Their filing hinges on their confidence that Sharp was Krebs's source uh, for the original story, and that despite knowing this and not retracting the story, they say Krebs affirmed defamatory statements. Yeesh. In December, Krebs defended his story, noting that the facts of the article, uh, that it was more catastrophic, catastrophic than disclosed, are not in dispute. It's just now known who's to blame for the breach. Also, Sharp has not been convicted. He referred to his original source as a Ubiquity employee and Sharp as a former Ubiquity developer. Okay. Man. Um, on Twitter, criminal defense attorney and former computer scientist T. Greg Doucette considered it a slap lawsuit, which is a strategic lawsuit against public participation, and noted that the suit was filed in Virginia, a state without an anti-slap statute. So here's the discussion question. Actually, there's a couple of discussion questions. The one that was put in by Jonathan Horst is... Is a security breach caused by an insider less catastrophic than one caused by an outsider? To which I would answer no. No, not at all. Not at no. all. If anything, it could be going on for much longer could and you... go much deeper than you might otherwise, uh, than what otherwise might be possible if someone was coming in from the outside. And discussion question number two is, as members of the media who have at times needed to protect our sources for reporting, do we think it is okay for a tech company to sue a member of the media over what appears to be um, a situation where they suspect but don't seem to be providing any incontrovertible proof that the source was the person who allegedly is responsible for the breach, but who hasn't actually been convicted. Um, I think that if Ubiquity takes issue with this situation, the correct thing for them to do is to disclose everything that they know to Brian Krebs, ask Brian, hey, does this change anything about your article? And if the answer is no, then they need to go back to the drawing board and figure out what they have incorrect about their facts if they're doing an internal investigation instead of filing a lawsuit against him. Like it's, yeah, this is not, this is not cool. Um, yeah. I, I, especially because like th there's defamation and there's also kind of like t when you subjectively look at things you can paint things in a in a 
better or worse way, right? Yeah. And if if Ubiquity wanted to not get painted in a in a bad light for like the rest of ever, this probably wasn't the way to go about this. Yeah. Like <laughs> I I don't really get it. Did they think that, you know, people weren't going to notice that that people weren't going to talk about this? Yeah. And the reality of it is that Ubiquity brought a lot of this on themselves by not correctly disclosing the severity of the breach in the first place. So honestly, the way that this feels to me, and I'm using my I'm choosing my words very carefully here because the last thing I want to do is get sued by ubiquity. This feels to me like more of a vengeful move, oh yeah, than anything that's actually about finding the truth and protecting customers. Is that do you kind of understand what I mean here? Like yeah. this this doesn't seem to be about moving forward in the best way possible. This seems to be about punishing something that was done in the past. Jake just added a note saying that Ubiquity is asking for $425,000 in damages. So, what damages? Right? Because um, you know, what, what What should you owe in damages for not properly disclosing a breach? Like, I, it's just... Uh, yeah. The correct thing to do is say, sorry, are bad, and then do better. And the thing is, Ubiquity is generally okay about doing that. They've made mistakes. They've had some mulligans. That square AC access point that I bought way back in the day, and they knew it, and they mostly dealt with it with their community. Uh, I didn't get any benefit from their their mitigations, and they, they it never worked properly for me, which, you know, and maybe it was a partly emotional decision, but it's one of the reasons that I went ruckus access point to my house. I've had great experiences with pretty much everything else from Ubiquity as far yeah. as products go. Yeah. Everything else about my home network is ubiquity. Almost everything at work is ubiquity, uh, with the exception of like uh, we have that those Dell twenty five gig switches and stuff like that, if I recall correctly. Sure. But um, you know, I had that sour taste in my mouth over their access points, and so you know, you you know, you guys know how to apologize and move on. But I think that's um, that kind of got lost here, whether it's an ego issue or whether it's um, a, 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 some other kind of emotional issue or whether this is just about, you know, getting back at whoever it was internally who who blew the whistle on this, which I also don't think is cool. This was a big deal. People needed to know. I'm uh, I'm extremely unhappy with this whole situation. That's what I'm going to say. Um, now, to be clear, that doesn't mean that Krebs is perfect. Um, and it could be that there's more to this story than meets the eye. I just, I hope, here's what I'll say, final word. I hope that when all the information from this case comes out and... This is my personal commitment, both Brian and Ubiquity, to follow this up, okay? If I forget, community, guys, hold me to this. I sincerely hope that when all of the details finally emerge, when this lawsuit is finalized, that there was a very good reason yeah. for them to go after him. Yeah. That's what I'll say. Because right now, you know, all we can do is, you know, all we can do is sniff. All we can do is go. How, how does this? How does this smell? It doesn't, it doesn't smell good. Smell good right now. Yeah, it smells bad. Yeah, but like you mentioned, we don't know everything. We don't. We um, really don't. But if if there isn't like a better reason than what we can see right now, this feels not great. So I'm hoping for I'm hoping for the best. Yeah. Because honestly, Ubiquity is one of those companies that has come in and been extremely disruptive. It's a good good disruptor. Uh, they've yeah. been an excellent disruptor in a network space that needed disruption. There's still big heavy monolithic companies. No like service fees. Yeah. There's yeah. no service fees to use their software. And when when they were kind of popping off was when was it I think it's Cisco that owns Meraki? Yep. That like 
not to be a jerk, but fairly predatory setup. Um, not a fan of how Meraki works. Um, and th that was right around the same time that Ubiquity kind of came in and saved the day in that yep. regard. Um, especially for for smaller enterprise stuff that can't necessarily afford yeah these, like, or even massive just licenses sm small to medium business right yeah. like they are so i want to root for them because i love the product and overall i i love the mission that they are on but so i'm really unhappy about the situation dollars right now in damages being thrown at a a blogger yeah is whew. okay Moving on. Yeah. What should we do next? Uh, Elon Musk? Oh. $3 billion? Yeah. Maybe someone else? No, let's just do it. So, can I just... I'm going to... We're going to go backwards. I'm going to start with a little paragraph here that... that Actually, it's a few paragraphs. Anthony's discussion question segment of this topic. Wow, this is long. Is almost <laughs> as long as his write up for, for for the event that took place. <laughs> I thought this was still notes about the event. I didn't realize that. And I think he's done. I think he's done a great job of outlining the issues here. Oh. Um, you know, what are the implications of Twitter adding an edit button beyond just fixing typos? Is hit one. We'll talk about that later. But here we get into. Things that uh, get a little spicier. So this is Anthony, okay? This is not me. I'm not, I'm not taking a stance. No hot takes this week, okay? Anthony says, Is the expectation that free speech will be enforced on Twitter going to make the platform a better place? Anthony says, Twitter is a platform owned by private individuals. If people feel strongly about free speech on it, it should be nationalized and made a public utility instead, paid for with taxpayer dollars. That's how private versus public property works, both in freedom of speech and how it's paid for. Well, sort of. Unless the private individuals want freedom of speech to be upheld on the platform. Right, but then that's up to them. Yeah. But freedom of speech is a right, not a discretionary decision well, made be. by the private owners of a whatever. Well, it can be. Because if it's a private establishment, like you're sure. saying, you, you, you don't have the right to freedom of speech, right? Right. But the private owners of the establishment can discretionarily choose to enforce that same standard. Sure. But I think that when when people talk about freedom of speech, particularly in America, I, they're talking about the constitutional yes, right. I understand. And so to me, you have to draw a line between discretionary freedom of speech and constitutional freedom of speech. And Anthony's not wrong. The constitutional kind takes place in public spaces. In public spaces, yeah. And I mean, specifically speaking out against the government, but like that's a whole separate conversation. There are actually yeah, yeah, things yeah. you can't say. Yeah. Um, okay, next question. Is it a good thing that a single person can easily take, well, admittedly incomplete, but such a degree of control over virtually anything he likes with few repercussions? I'm adding a little bit of my own spice here, especially when this person has a history of Participating he can't in, be taxed more than he is because he needs that money to get us to Mars. Participating okay? in—that's what he's going to use the money for. He's not going to use it for buying Twitter. He's not going to use it for <laughs> buying other stuff. He needs it to get to Mars. Participating in Russia-style revisionist history. Whoa. He calls himself the founder of Tesla. Does he? Yeah. He literally sued the founders for the title of founder. He's not the founder. <laughs> I didn't know about this. Yeah, like it's just, I, I, why? <laughs> Elon Musk co-founded and leads Tesla. Okay. No, no, he didn't. <laughs> I did not know that was a thing. Like, <laughs> that seems so weird, but okay. Uh, Anthony uh, says, now these are Anthony's words now. Musk already has more money than he knows what to do with and has repeatedly shown that he doesn't care to use it for selfless purposes. This heavily implies it's not an ideological freedom or benevolent move, and even if it were, it's motivated by opposing biases, not neutrality. Finally, Anthony asks, why is Elon Musk seen as a savior to so many people? And he says, when people feel helpless, they look to someone powerful who can help. Powerful people, however, are dangerous. 
Musk may represent what people want today, but when his views don't align, there will be literal there will be little to stop him from unilaterally imposing them anyway if his minority share grows, or he could just pump and dump like usual, either or can you tell I'm not a fan? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Especially could be answered every single question that he asked. Um, <laughs> he did. <laughs> extremely thoroughly. Um yeah, I don't know. I uh the the guy has a lot of money. Has extreme amounts of money. Yeah. And, and on our current systems, that means that you can do extreme amounts of things. Extreme amounts of just about anything you want. I mean, yeah. honestly, now we're getting okay, crap. I'm going to I'm going to go hot take here. Nice. Um I think we need to choose our male mo- male role models better. Okay. Frankly, um I I immediately lose respect for a man who does not take care of his family. That simple. Uh, and I think that there's I think that there's a lot of discussion right now in the world about uh, you know what is masculinity, right? Does you he know, not take care of his family? A lot of discussion around toxic masculinity. Um, a lot of discussion around and like what that is. You know what that means or yeah. or whatever. And I'm not getting into any of that. But I think man or women or anywhere in between, um, if you can't be trusted to take care of your own flesh and blood and the people that you make commitments to, um, then how can you be trusted? In anything. So does does he? I don't so really follow. Does an example. Not... An example is the way that people, you know, idolize someone like Steve Jobs. Okay. Who? Yep. There's some. There's some. I know about that stuff. I don't know about Elon, but there are some nasty. Oh yeah. Skeletons in that closet, and I just sit here and I go, I'm sorry. Why Pirates should I Silicon respect Valley, you? Amazing movie. He still hasn't watched it. I've been trying to get him to watch it for a decade. I know. I totally need a to. a decade. I totally need to. I Amazing know. movie, though, if you want to hear about some of that stuff. Um, but yeah, okay. Yeah, I agree with that one. Yeah. But like, does this apply to Elon? I don't know. So I forget the details. Um, hold on a second. No, there's 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 some spicy stuff there. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, Elon Musk's first wife. Here we go. Wasn't that a long time ago? I was a starter wife inside America's messiest divorce. <laughs> first hits. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so he did he was with her from 2000 until 2008 i believe so anyway the point is yeah i think we need to choose our role models better in general uh in float plane chat laddie has an excellent an excellent summary of why we just shouldn't take this guy seriously uh, constant again, someone else's words, you know, okay, I'm just repeating them. Constantly lies about charity for self-promotion, lies about his Does products it? and capabilities, and is unethical about his treatment of employees. He's toxic as hell. So what has he lied about in, in a in a charity sense? Uh, I'm not sure. That's why like some, I said some that someone stuff, else's words. I, I'm I'm totally okay with, with doesn't I, oh him. oh yeah values free speech like a lot but doesn't value transparency at all. You know about the whole thing where Tesla literally doesn't have a press relations department. Oh, really? It got inconvenient to answer questions like, hey, why have you uh, massaged the numbers with respect to the safety of your autonomous driving technology? Um, and so they just dissolved it. They just don't answer. They just don't answer. Hey, uh, couldn't help noticing that you guys like literally like glued this in or you're using like a piece of wood here instead of what you're supposed to be using. Okay, we're just not going to answer emails anymore. Like it's actually just... Uh, I, I have a very difficult time. I have a very difficult. Yeah. Also pumped Dogecoin. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah. That that whole. I mean. Yeah. Do we have to? I. I. I yeah. Okay. I'm all I'm trying to do is make sure that things we're saying on this show is backed oh. up. Laddie says he recently lied about providing Starlink to Ukraine. The U.S. government funded most of it, and he claimed it was all his charity, or at the very least, didn't provide the full context. Uh, yeah, I don't think he claimed it was all his charity. No, but I mean, the tweet was like, you would assume you would assume. Yeah. I'm just trying to make yep. sure the stuff we say is, is backed up. Yeah. So maybe l- lied is actually definitely the wrong word, but allowing yeah. people to assume things, especially when you're someone who knows social media as well as Musk does. Fundamentally to me, it's not that different. Knock 23 says Doge is still the best. All right. Duly noted. Duly noted. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, the Bitman says, I do not respect Steve Jobs at all personally, and the stuff in his personal life is disgusting to say the least. That being said, people respect him for his vision. Um, do you have thoughts about picking and choosing what aspects of a person you want to respect and look up to? You know what? Like, the problem with that is that you end up you end up whitewashing, for lack of a better word. You end up you end up whitewashing these people and allowing them to continue to exist in this position of power and respect when frankly I I would rather we just see them for what they are. I don't know. I mean, it's 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 it an interesting question. Would we be better off with the billionaires we have or would we be better off taking people that have actually come from nothing, handing them the billions of dollars and letting them decide what to do with it? I I think if I effectively infinite money is going to corrupt the majority of people sure but maybe we'd be maybe we'd be better off if they at least spent some time outside of the ivory tower there's no there's no functional way to do that though i know i know yeah well i don't know the french kind of figured it out <laughs> it's, it's been, okay it's maybe been there's a, been a hot take today <laughs> there's been a lot of chat about that um but no action um I, I don't know. It's a, it's a it's a weird thing to to say that someone like isn't allowed to invest in companies anymore is a pretty ham fisted um, response to to modern capitalism. But I'm not I'm not necessarily sure how to how to do it. Um, I'm excited that he he pushed for the edit option, edit tweet option. Realistically, but they were working on it already. They had already been working on well, it. Well, I mean, they're, they're, it's not like this is a new idea. It's fascinating to me that they weren't done in a week. Um, like apparently they've been working on it for like over a year and that's just actually like I mean that's the, extremely interesting at me. the scale Twitter operates uh nah shouldn't matter well hold on a second because okay okay here I, I'm gonna play devil's advocate okay part of Twitter's really part, part of Twitter's deal mm. is that because you can't edit anything it's either there or you delete it it exists in this binary state. I mean, there's right? no real thing. Deleting it is not real, though. But okay, sure. But the point is that from a public from a public standpoint, so in, okay. In oh, that no, sense, I mean, like it's it's permanent. Yeah, it's permanent, right? If it goes up at all, it's permanent because people people have scrapers and people. Scrape so them. I would I would guess that in order to implement editing in a way that still has the integrity of that permanence of the platform a very easy facebook already did it just copy them i'm just saying it might be you can literally see revision history and there's a very obvious like this post has been edited like very obvious and you like highlight over that and it shows revision history it's like extremely clear been done by other people the blueprints have been made for you just copy no one is expecting you to come up with the world's most original edit function just do it it's like actually pathetic that they haven't done it yet. That's and fair. Twitter is a terrible platform. And I'm happy that more people are hating on it because it's trash. All right. Sorry. Okay. That's, that's fair. That's it. Um, oh, we should probably also Twitter. bring up that Musk didn't disclose his stake in Twitter or the fact like that he intended time, right? for it to be an active stake, which means that essentially um, he was able to stealthily acquire the shares uh, without driving up the price because a high profile person like him coming in and taking such a large stake would have driven up the price, which is why there are disclosure timelines and there are laws around that. So I just, we can just put, throw it on the pile of him just it, who's in it for himself only. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just, I'm at the point now where I, I just can't, I can't, yeah, I can't pretend that he's anything other than Bag. I think he's a very public version of that. I think there's an extreme amount of these people in. For sure. Oh, I don't think he's an exception at all. And I think he catches a lot of flack just because he talks publicly more than a lot of the other ones. Uh, but or I think he's just more shameless, which is just I don't know if that's worse or better. Like, do you think Bezos is better? Probably not. We talk about Elon significantly more. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think it's. I mean, just we talk about Bezos a fair bit on like tech LinkedIn stuff, though. Just because he's in this industry, he even has he even the, has like a nickname. We call him Daddy Bezos. Yeah, 
That's generally a positive thing. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah. Sugar daddy is not a positive connotation, think, Mr. Lafreniere. I think if most people called a... Straw poll! I think if most people called an adult male daddy, that's, a, that's seen as like a, wow, nice. You're doing good. You're probably attractive and wealthy. Damn. <laughs> I think that's what's going on. I think that's where the internet's at. I think you are going to be so wrong petition on this to, one. Petition to call Linus daddy from now on? You know what's funny is uh, Jake said it so that the greeting when, when I you, scan the ubiquity yeah. thing is actually Papa. Yeah. But he's doing that ironically because that's like, it, I think he's I think he's using it in a pejorative manner. <laughs> okay. So guys, let us know. Let us know. All right, man. Musk. I've like I haven't just come out and been like, yeah, guys, a douchebag, up until now because it's not really great in my position. Just like issuing personal insults to giant figures in industries that I will have to you know cover in the future. But he's just got such a long track record of just being a complete ass face now that I just, I don't think there's any hope of rehabilitation. So what, what do I, eventually I was going to have to take a stand on it. I respect uh, that he's found a way to make industry in certain areas that are hopefully positive for the world. Um, and I respect that he did it in a capitalistic way. I don't respect how much money he takes from those things. Um, and I don't respect the way he like treats his workers and stuff like that. Yeah. I have no idea about the, you were talking about the like, uh, family stuff. I know nothing about that. I don't know anything about the charity things. Uh, I don't know any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Whatever you guys. Yeah. Uh, by the way, get wrecked. That is. Welcome to the internet. Bull. <laughs> by <No>. the way. <laughs> there is no way. Welcome to the internet. There is no way. <laughs> <laughs> no way that's what's up that's no what's up. no that's, that's not real up. that is real straw poll is flawless there's that no problem with it that is broken 100 okay? <laughs> don't refresh the page don't refresh the page i am yes! refreshing the page no yeah, it didn't even ahead. register any more votes yeah because straw poll is flawless okay there's ne there's never been a problem with straw poll i don't believe this i literally cannot believe this you believe whatever you want Daddy. yeah float planes like no i voted no i voted negative no way <laughs> Too bad, 100% positive. Yeah, Let's yeah. go. A crane says daddy is a sexualized term, buddy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and Ex no sexualized term in the history of man has ever been a positive thing. Daddy, <laughs> daddy is creepy. Okay, daddy's creepy. Oh, so you're calling your employees creepy now? Because what? They no. Call him daddy Bezos? No, I'm calling Bezos creepy. <laughs> he's like, he's daddy Bezos. He's like, watching you. Through your ring freaking doorbell, like <laughs> he's not, he's not, he's not. He doesn't watch you through your doorbell. No, his. It, you go into a room in his house, and it's just monitors. <laughs> Everyone, the floor, doorbell. the ceiling, the, all the walls, just every single person's doorbell. They're all covered in Samsung. The wall displays. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! Hundred percent, baby. Let's go. Ah. So stupid. There's no way. <laughs> we need to get our own polling system at some point. Yeah, because what is up just, with straw polls? It's just sucking broken. now. Yeah, it's it's just not counting tons of votes. It's whatever. I'll, I'm I'm still gonna take the win because why not? But um, it's definitely not counting all the votes. All right. Uh, should we? Oh, we should do our. Let's do our sponsors. Oh, we should do some merch messages. Holy crap! There's got to be so many because people are picking up the LTT store dot co um. Uh, sure. I'm sure. Uh, there... <laughs> There's a few. <laughs> oh, we sold a few! Yes, thank you to everybody. Thank you. Uh, uh, all right. Here, this is so funny. Uh, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this from here, but, uh, sales line go up. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Yeah, we're trying to go as fast as possible, but it was like 200 orders or something like that all of a sudden it's swarming us <laughs> okay for those of you who are tuning in late we're doing a special edition lttstore.com.com depends on 
how you look at it, which colors you look at to celebrate being one of two of actually the top edited pixels on r slash place this year uh, was pretty exciting. It's going to be a limited edition shirt. Uh, they're only for sale this weekend. So get your orders in if you want to get one. Uh, what am I supposed to be looking at? Right. Yeah. Let's do a couple of curated merch messages. Adam says, what was the ultimate fate of the mineral oil PC? Sorry, what? You should have him oh, read. right, right. Sorry, um, Bell, you're supposed to read them. I'll finish this one, but then you're up. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I've been watching since the original build log in 2014. I personally hope it's on a display shelf as it deserves. I believe we ended up actually giving away the skeleton of it, and the guts eventually died. That so makes sense. That's yeah. where we're at on that. Yeah. What else we got? What product computer hardware, peripherals, or consoles, or game launch, have you both been most excited about over the years? And that's from Dawson. Woo! Halo most 2. excited? Really? Yeah, the, the Halo 2 launch was probably one of the most fun times I've had. I remember we, we were lined up. We were at uh, Willowbrook Mall and e EB Games back then. I think it has had a name change. Uh, but EB Games back then, we were lined up at the back where like the truck yeah. would load EB Games. There was all these people lined up. Uh, these dudes drove a truck up and they had a generator in the back and an old CRT and an original Xbox and they were playing Halo 1 and people were able to like cycle in and play. An EB Games employee came out and like started yelling out questions and I knew all the answers to all the questions so I won a bunch of stuff because I read oh, the like PC cool. Gamer that's article fine. or whatever. Everyone was just like broing out, having fun, talking about Halo. Um, yeah, ha Halo Halo 2 or potentially uh, Burning Crusade. But both of them, th this said launch and both of them, the reason why I liked them so much was the lineup which you never really have anymore because everyone just buys things online. But but yeah. lining up midnight launches were so much fun. I enjoyed the Wii launch lineup so much, I did it twice. <laughs> yeah. Yvonne and I did it together. And it's, you know what? It's cool. It's fun. Okay, crazy pitch, guys. As a date, go to, it doesn't even matter what it is, but like go to a midnight screening or a product, a, a, like a major product launch and like line up and camp out and hang out. You'll you'll probably find people to play Pokemon with or like absolutely, it, absolutely. It's an experience worth having, and it was in yeah. December, so it was like <laughs> snowing. We're lined up in, outside Toys R Us. We did uh, Best Buy. I think it was Future Shop back then. Wow, yeah, we did. Uh, we did either Future Shop or Best Buy, whatever it was, and we also did Toys R Us. And I, I think one of the reasons is, and we talked about this on the show before. Passion is very interesting. And one of the things you're going to run into in those lineups is often a lot of people that are very passionate or very interested in a lot of the same things you are. So conversation yeah. is often very interesting. A yeah. lot of people will go to pretty extreme lengths, like I was talking about with the, the guys that brought yep. the truck, like to, to make sure that it's like kind of fun for everyone around. Like I used to love midnight game launches. I would be more interested in certain games if I knew that like EB or a local store was yep. going to have a midnight launch. I would be like, ooh. Well, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I'll look into this game more because I knew they were going to have a launch. It was fun. Um, it's hard for me to compare any kind of excitement I could have for something as an adult to the yeah. kind of excitement that I had That's when I was fair. a child waiting for the Super Nintendo. That I, was my Christmas present. It was the mm. only thing that I asked for for Christmas. I was like, I don't care about anything else. May I have a Super Nintendo and um, I, I think I've told the story of the drama that went on around that, where my aunt's house actually got robbed and my, my Super Nintendo got stolen, like, moments before Christmas. And she had to buy a new one from a scalper <laughs> so that I'd have something to open up on Christmas morning. So I didn't get the two-controller uh, Super Mario World bundle. I got it with just the one controller. So I had to wait until I could get my hands on another controller to play two-player. But... I, I don't think anything can compare. It was 1994, right? I was eight years old. Like nothing yeah. compares to that. Yeah, and that, that's or 95, fair. I mean, so I was nine. If, but. If, so I, I was specifically going with launches. If we're going with like the first time I got something, well, that was a launch. That like it was at launch. Okay. So yeah. it like launched, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> you know, like it's that's different. It hits different. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely does. That I remember. Uh, I I don't. Two times that I have definitely cried in my lifespan were when we first got an N64 and when we first got an Xbox. Um, <laughs> those, those weren't launches. That is some pathetic gamer.
shit true. right there. And I'm pretty sure my brother did too, and it's totally okay. And I, I remember, like, with the Xbox One, my dad convinced us uh, that he had bought my mom a crystal ball. I don't know why I didn't question why that would have been a thing, mm -hmm. but I was just like, whatever, sounds good. And it was in this big box in the middle, and my mom didn't know that my dad did this. No one else knew that my dad told us this. Right. So my mom was like trying to get us to open it, because she's really excited for us to get it. But my dad told us, like, you can't let her open it because like this needs to be the last thing because it's like the really cool thing right so we were fighting my mom to not open this <laughs> present <laughs> and we thought when we went to go open it we thought it was for mom so like my brother takes one side and i take the other side and we lift it off the top and my dad's already like unboxed everything and yeah. laid it out in like this really cool way um so we lift the top up and my family's just like that's for you, but we're looking at my mom. <laughs> so we don't realize until we look down and it was just, yeah, it was very cool. Yeah. Did your parents ever pull the, um, the like, the misleading rapping gag on you guys? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. I, I forget what it was. My parents absolutely pulled it on me. Um, this is totally unrelated, but definitely a funny story that I want to immortalize. Did you ever get scammed on April Fool's Day on a non-school day? I don't think so. My dad pulled it on me oh. when I was a young boy. Oh. <laughs> he got me up on a Saturday at 7.15 in the morning and goes, get ready for school. Come on, let's go. We made it as far as being fully clothed, <laughs> backpack on, walk, like almost to the school. He goes, it's Saturday. <laughs> April Fool's. <laughs> oh. my, my, my girls... Got my boy. <laughs> oh, really? So it was easier than usual because their school happened to have April Fool's off for parent conferences. Okay. So it wasn't it was a Saturday. A yeah, yeah. It was a weekday. <laughs> they go in, they start miming, getting their, their clothes on and everything, and they're like, let's go. He got as far as walking out the front door to go get the, the carpool uh, the 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 kid that we carpool with to come to come over because he was late, <laughs> and they run out and they're like, yeah, I'm from the <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic! And my when I came home because I didn't even know about it. When I came home, my daughter thought the most hilarious thing about it was that. She was now on... Wait, you didn't organize this? No. She was well into her second day of having not worn anything but pajamas, and she had made him get dressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was amazing. amazing. I thought it was amazing. I loved it. That's funny. Um, all right. What else we got? So this is from Pierce, but also a few other people have asked uh, if you have a braces update. Okay. Dr. Y, love you. You did a terrible job of the braces. <laughs> I told you you were doing a terrible job while you were doing it. I told you specifically what about it was terrible and how it was going to fail. You insisted on doing it that way. I told you, you might as well book my follow-up now because they will need to be fixed. They immediately broke within two days in exactly the way that I said that they would break. I came back and got them fixed. I said, this is going to happen again. It will happen immediately. And here's why. And you did it again. So I literally took a pair of needle nose pliers after two or three of them had broken off again, the brackets. I ripped them all off and I said, I'm going to a different, I'm going to a different doctor. Uh, I went to an orthodontic clinic um, near the office because I figured that would be convenient so I could jet over there during work and come back like on my lunch. And I got a quotation for both train tracks and Invisalign. They were actually not as different as I expected. So I figured, okay, I'm going to do Invisalign. I, I, I told them that. And they said, okay, we'd be happy to do Invisalign on you, but we couldn't help noticing that your top wisdom teeth are still in. The way that your mouth is right now, because you've had your bottoms out because they kept getting infected, but I didn't do the tops because I didn't want to do them all at once. And I was like, oh, my whole face is going to be like, bleh. Um, <laughs> uh, 
I had such an awful experience getting the bottom ones out. I will never forget the sound it made because they were like deep, like full proper teeth and they were like buried by gum. They had to like really get in there and like, <laughs> oh, I'll never forget that feeling. I, I'm one of those people where the pain at the dentist isn't what really bothers me as much. Um, I, I tend to be kind of, I think the term is sensory defensive. Um, so certain textures, certain sounds, um, I actually find the, I, for years, this is hilarious. I went through many cavities, some without anesthetic, like per, for, for, for shallow ones. Um, I went through many cavities, not realizing that the dentist drill is the one for emptying out the cavity. I thought the dentist drill was the rotary toothbrush that they use <laughs> because that everyone says they hate the dentist drill and I fucking hate that thing. <laughs> Like it makes my skin crawl. Even as an even as a 30 something adult man, I am sitting there in the chair. The dentist is like talking to me. I have my hands clenched around something. I usually have my feet crossed without thinking about it. And I have my eyes closed while they're working on me with that thing. Full brace, because yeah. it is so unpleasant. Yeah. Um and so that that sound, no, they did not knock me out, those of you asking. I, d I don't want to risk going under general anesthetic for such a minor procedure. It's not worth it. Uh, for me, pers that is my personal decision. Um, you, you, you can go under general and not wake up. Like, that. that's a thing. Uh, and I was not into that. So, um, anyway, what was I saying? Right. So the orthodontist comes back to me and goes... Yeah, so what happens then is your top wisdom teeth are not biting down on anything, which means that they can shift. Now, I would make the argument to them that the way the gums have covered and the amount the tops have come down, they're probably not going to keep falling, but that can happen. And if that happens, it'll shift all the teeth again, and so they don't want to do orthodontic work on me until I get my wisdoms out. Makes and sense. I just keep putting it off. Yeah. And putting it off. Yeah. And putting it off. Yeah. <laughs> so, Are you gonna do it? I want to. If you look at the bottoms. Yeah. It's getting kind of nasty and it's getting worse. Like the way they're just like crowding up together. And particularly now that I have some more room here, maybe they can kind of fix that. Uh, even, and this is with disking. That was one of the most unpleasant uh, sensory experiences that I have ever had. Do you know what disking is? No. Um, disking. So if you look at the shape of my bottom teeth. Kind of like this? Yeah. Yeah. They have kind of like a, a, a V shape. And so uh, disking is trying to salvage back some of the space between those teeth by doing what it sounds like. Putting discs Taking in a rotary tool. Oh. And shaving in between them. <laughs> So not only was there the unpleasantness of that sensation, but there was the fear that a, a slip of what is essentially a Dremel tool in your mouth could be pretty awful. Yeah. Um, oh, everyone's saying top wisdom teeth aren't as bad. I know. I know. It's less likely to get infected because stuff doesn't like fall into it and stuff and stuff and stuff. But I, uh, I just, oh, I just hated it. The only good thing about getting my wisdom teeth out was that I finally bought a switch. <laughs> because I was told that I would be doing nothing but sitting and drinking liquids for days. Yeah. Yeah. So I might as well get settled. And I was like, you know what? I'm finally going to get a switch. switch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I did. And I got completely sucked into Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, which I, I still have no regrets about. Even though Nintendo is an awful, awful anti-consumer company that yeah. I, I should feel bad about giving money to. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hit me up with one more. From Dennis. I think I've been watching for over 10 years at this point. I remember my first video being you walking around outside with a monitor and opening it on a random table. <laughs> What's your most memorable moment of LTT? Holy crap. You know, it's not the first time I've been asked that. Um, wow. But it's it gets harder every time. Like, I was watching... Uh, I was trying to find some clip for some reason, and I pulled up the wrong video, what turned out to be the wrong video, and I watched the intro of it, and it was it was like a three and a half year old video by this point, so it was it was completely fresh, and it was a video about the um, 
I forget what it's called, the key mouse, the key mouse. So it's a keyboard that has mouse sensors so you can type and mouse without ever actually lifting your hands off of it. And uh, James was the writer for it. And we did this we did this goofy sketch at the beginning where Colton is playing the role of this presenter who's pitching who's pitching a product in a business meeting. Here, I might as well just bring it up. Uh, I don't think we have my audio fixed. Uh, key mouse L whatever LTT. Yeah, here we go. I don't think we have my audio fixed, but that's fine. We'll just uh, Tokyo, Japan. Here it is. Here it is. Um, so <laughs> what we did <laughs> is we envisioned the pitch meeting, and we actually had um, we had the we had the vo voices dubbed over in Japanese, <laughs> and then we subtitled <laughs> our own <laughs> our own video, <laughs> and so it's just this stupid pitch. Uh, of him being like, well, so so that's good, but what are we going to call it? And I believe it's a female voice for Colton's like mental, uh, and, and so it's in Japanese. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh. <laughs> anyway, um, I guess what I'm trying to say is over the years, we've done so many things <laughs> that I, I didn't even remember doing this. I watched, I, I burst out laughing. Just watching this, I was like, that was so freaking funny. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Well, we use the conference room all the time, Aiden. We use it, like, if anything, we don't have enough conference room yeah. these days. Yeah, we use it all the time. It, it is more used now than ever. Uh, I don't know. There's been Man. a lot of stuff. Like, there's, there's milestones, right? You know, a million subscribers, or the first time we got a YouTube rep, or... A million subscribers is pretty sick. You know, the new the new office, like... I remember how pissed I was. I, th I told you this story, too. Uh, we were at PAX. This was one of the first... Maybe it was actually the first? No. I don't know. Maybe it was the second PAX? But it, it was at a very early PAX, back when I used to do the Indie Mega Booth. Yeah. And there was this guy in the indie mega booth and i was i was going around talking to people about their games and stuff because i was trying to figure out if i was going to do another indie mega booth video um and he was like sorry who are you and i was like oh we're this like tech channel we have almost a million subscribers and he was like oh well if you cover my game maybe you'll get to a million and i was like the <laughs> you know me the amount of immediate rage was like very high. <laughs> and I was just like, no, <laughs> there is no way I am covering your crappy game. <laughs> <laughs> so hitting hitting that like first one million milestone, I remember thinking back to that dude and just being like, well, you dude, <laughs> we made it without you. Um, There's been so many moments, like yeah. you know, some of them are you know remembering how hard it was and how hard we worked, like that first CES when I had to, yeah. I had to fight so hard just to get a meeting with anybody. Yeah. And then there's the ones like on the trip to Intel. I think I talked about this in Tel Aviv. Um, having you know literally 25, 30, was it 40? I don't know. It was like a crowd of people that had apparently all been messaging throughout the day that they wanted to have like a photo op and, and, and take selfies with me. And my handlers kept being like, like they, he actually has to make a video, like video first, video first. They finally come to me. They're like, look, uh, the dam's going to burst here at some point. Like we have to, we have to do something. Are you okay doing that? I'm like, you guys didn't even ask me. Yeah, I'm totally down. <laughs> and the, the experience, of the yeah. experience of mm. walking out there with people who are so smart that they are building the most advanced products, designing the most advanced products on the planet, and they're like a fan of me. Like <laughs> you know, by comparison, I, I I feel like I'm pretty smart. I'm good at some stuff, but the amount of respect that I have for what they do, and they're like. They're like, oh, can I get a picture of the, oh, this is so exciting. I'm like, guys, chill. You're the ones doing the cool stuff, right? Like how mind blowing that is for me as an experience, right? Where I talk to people that I'm like, and they're like, oh, Linus, you're super cool. I'm like, no, I'm not, <laughs> you know, like I just, there's, there's just been, it's just countless, you know, this has been a wild run, you guys. And 
you know, I, I'm reminded of bittersweet moments, right? Like the 10 million subscriber stream. That wasn't an easy thing for me to say, but it was also cathartic. And it was, it was, I still go back and read comments on it just to, just to see your guys' support um, and how much what we're doing means to you. You know, it's, it's hard to distill it down to one moment. I don't think I can. Yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't think I can. I, I was reminded of Highlander, which, by the way, we didn't talk about it on WAN Show yet. Somebody beat it. Oh, really? Yeah. They go to Alaska? Our Guinness World Record no longer stands. Wait, so it must have been continental United States. Then. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll pull it up, but okay. I, I wanted to... I, I, I thought I sent it to Riley. I'm going to check my scent. I'll check my scent to Riley because I want to talk about it. But Highlander is no longer the world's highest elevation land party. And these guys went. They went hard. They like trained for months. They went much higher than we did. <laughs> oh, so yeah, it must not be continental United States then. I'll I'll check. I'll check. Um, here's the context. Which, to be clear, doesn't diminish it at all. Land show lol. How does this? I, I think this is it. I think this is it. Oh wait, no, this is not it. Ah, oh, damn it. That's our place. Yep, I'll find it. I'll find it. Do you want to do a sponsor spot in the meantime? Sure. Let me get to that section. Do, 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 do. It's a lot of stuff in the dock this time. Sponsor spots. Oh. Oh, oh, and I have to do the thing. I think I just did it. You did it? Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. Devolutions. Thanks to Devolutions for sponsoring this video. Devolutions offers productivity and security solutions to IT professionals. With Devolutions, you can centralize all remote connections and credentials on a single platform that's securely shared with your entire team. The remote desktop manager is essentially a Swiss army knife for remote access. Uh, and Devolution Server is a full-featured shared account and credentials management solution with built-in privileged access components. Fun fact, Devolutions also has its own comic strip called Sys Adminator <laughs> about the life of an IT world available uh, on their website. Find out why Devolutions has a ridiculously loyal customer base of world-class IT pros with decades of experience who rave about their solutions and support. Start a free trial today by visiting devolutions.net or the link below. And next, one second. Zoho CRM. Thank you to Zoho CRM for also sponsoring our video today. Zoho CRM is a 360 degree solution for managing your business's sales, marketing, and customer service. With their intuitive UI and simple navigation, you can implement their service quickly and efficiently with minimal disruption to your current process. They offer AI predictions to help you understand your customers' needs so you can see trends and purchase patterns by a variety of indicators. Plus, their inbuilt design studio helps you customize your CRM experience to help you spot critical customer or account information at a glance, helping you get your work done faster. Zoho offers flexible contracts, transparent pricing, and an ever-evolving product that grows to meet your needs without snowballing costs. With over 15 years of experience in the industry and over 250,000 clients, Zoho CRM is a great solution to support you in your customer relationship management needs. Get 50% off your annual subscription when you use code ZCRM50 using the link in the description. And last but not least, we have Jump Cloud. Uh, thanks to Jump Cloud for sponsoring today's show as well. Uh, Jump Cloud is launching a new IT community for IT professionals uh, where they talk about all things IT and share best practices, career guidance, industry topics, and Jump Cloud products. Uh, they're creating a variety of guides and templates that are helpful for IT admins in their everyday work, as well as career spotlights for those in the field. You can watch for experts to join and provide even more value. A Jump Cloud's IT meetup network is also kicking off, so you'll have opportunities to meet local colleagues and share virtually. Uh, or share virtually or slash and in person. Uh, Jump Cloud, join Jump Cloud as they build one IT community to rule them all at community.jumpcloud.com or at the link below. Thanks, Luke. Yay. You Here it, it is. Ooh. Kilimanjaro. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> That's pretty sweet. Like I said, these guys <laughs> fuck. All right. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. Uh, so let's, uh, the group goes by the name Strike Team Alpha. They clearly, clearly had us in their radar because oh, yeah. there's just like no other reason to try to no. set a record for highest altitude land party on land, right? Like we, man, we had to fight with Guinness to even get this to be a record because it didn't exist before we decided yeah. this should be a, a thing that you can set a record for. It's kind of cool that someone carried the torch forward. Actually. It is. I'm kind of happy that we like lost it. That's cool. I love it. So uh, their elevation was 5,894 meters. Here they are, Let's laptop go. in hand. Yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> Strike Team Alpha trained for, hold on a second months where where does it say how many months they trained for preparation here we go preparation for the attempt began in june of 2021 with an hour of physical training per day eventually increasing to up to eight plus hours they hosted a number of practice land parties in cold rooms and meat lockers to <laughs> replicate the cold temperatures of the altitude they hope to reach as a result of their dedicated preparation and planning everything went to plan on the day of the attempt most climbers would reach Uhuru Peak and take 15 to 30 minutes of rest before returning to base camp. The group had to stay there for four plus hours, setting up tents to help endure the cold, their equipment, hosting the land party, and gathering their evidence for the record. They then had to hike 12 hours back to base camp while tired and hungry with added breathing difficulties on top of that. Whew! Is that amazing or what? That is awesome. How is hard did these guys go Extremely. to absolutely annihilate our record? That's fantastic. This is amazing. They've been landing since 2012 and just massive respect. That's so the cool. The only thing that I'm upset about here is that it took me four months to see this and be like, yo guys, you rock. You know, you know, games are in a bad state when you have a group of people that have been landing since 2012 and they're like, you know, it'd be a good idea <laughs> playing some CS 1.6, spend, spend, spending eight hours a day training to climb a mountain instead of playing video games. <laughs> I love it. I also love how neckbeard um, these guys are. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> the guy on the far left is like down to here. You know, it might be a good idea for what they're doing if it's that cold. 100%. Yeah. I absolutely love it. So, uh, man, I, I'm stoked. So, people are like, land party in outer space, when? No, no. So that was actually one of the things that allowed, uh, or that we were able to uh, lean on to convince Guinness to allow us to make it a world record because they were like, well, this is just stupid because anyone could just play computer games on a plane. And we we're like, no, no, it's, it has to be on land. So we were actually like scaling a peak in order to do, we had to explain what a land party was and stuff, right? So it, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm always going to be proud of us for establishing this as a category. Yeah. I'm super proud of these guys for taking it to the next level, yeah. figuratively and literally. And I'm excited to see the next challenge. If the if you guys have any any video or anything, we'd love for you yeah. to send it over so we yeah. could show it on uh, on Wan Show or something like that. Maybe have you guys on so you can talk about the experience. Uh, the way to get in touch with us is Linus Tech Tips at gmail.com. We want to hear from you. So um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your names. Unfortunately, these are challenging um, for my for my English tongue here. But um, we, we'd love to we'd love to have you guys on and talk about it. Super excited. All right. We should do a few more merch messages because I feel like these are really piling up. So far, I am surprised to um, find out and inform you. I'm surprised to discover and pleased to inform you that 461 people will be proudly wearing lttstore.com on the front <laughs> of their chest in the near future. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. You guys are ridiculous. You guys are absolutely ridiculous. And calm. It's a little bit of both. Yeah. Calm a bit of both. Um okay, yeah, let's do let's do a merch message and maybe another another main topic here. Chase right. asks, finally been waiting for this. I just got my first 3D printer and I'm wondering how you guys integrate 3D printing into your workflow. 
Good lord, there's a lot of ways. We've 3D printed everything from holders for CPUs and SD cards just to make them more convenient to organize and keep track of to uh, you know, 3D printing replacement IO shields and PCI brackets for devices that otherwise we wouldn't be able to secure to a chassis to uh, making toys for my kids to, I mean, what do we not use a 3D printer for at this point? Yeah. I mean, prototyping products for LTT store, We've used it extensively for that. Uh, yeah, they're great. Love 3D printers. Lots of holders. I think that's probably the main thing. Lots of holders. You mentioned holders, but like just lots and lots and oh, lots of holders. Oh, uh, I I didn't have uh, I didn't have back covers for my Game Gear. So Jake, uh, I think he found and then tweaked a design and printed some some back covers for my Game Gear so the batteries wouldn't sweet. fall out. Like, yeah, they're they're just they're great. They're great. Cooper. Let's, oh, sure, one more. Cooper asks, uh, what the upgrade do you think provide the best reward for effort and cost in your new home upgrade series? The stairs. <laughs> Honestly, not having those stairs there was just so boneheaded. I don't know why the previous owners didn't do it. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, like the fact that there was obviously supposed to be a staircase there and it just wasn't there was just <laughs> super stupid. Uh, I shouldn't say stupid. I understand why they didn't do it because they didn't finish that side. So I guess they figured, well, why bother having stairs there? But obviously you're never going to finish it if you don't put stairs there. Yeah. So... Yeah, I'm super excited about the stairs. I am i don't know if it's practical. I don't remember if practical was part of the question, but I'm super jazzed to use computer and server heat to dump into the swimming pool. That's going to be awesome. Right, you're doing solar heat as well, That right? too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're both going to just dump into the pool, which is crazy and amazing. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think it's just a... Oh, oh. I saw the projector for the first time today. Okay, what's it called? LS1200 something? Epson's new projector? Oh, LS12000 from Epson. It's five grand US, which is still a lot of it's a money. Bit better than the wall. But the image quality of this thing, it's laser backlit LCD. So there's no, um, there's no rainbow effect. The backlight is crazy strong for a light-controlled room. It hits 2,700 lumens. It does up to 4K 120 with, like, okay, it's noticeable. I can detect it. Most people on Earth would not detect the input lag. So the gaming experience on this thing is going to be flipping amazing. I, I'm just, I'm excited. And the thing I'm most excited about is that to get this level of performance, if we'd done this even a year ago, would have cost closer to 20, 25 grand. So yes, that's pretty. That's, that's a, pretty a lot product. of money. Yeah. But compared to what it would have been. I'm just happy you didn't get the wall. I'm excited. Yeah, it would have been so stupid yeah. compared to this. Yeah. Like so stupid. I'm so glad I didn't do it. That's actually what we went for with title thumbnail and appetizer of the video was uh, like Jake was right, essentially. <laughs> he tried to talk me out of it too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Back to topics. Yeah, let's do let's right. do a discussion topic here, shall we? Sure. Is there any that we like need to get through? Uh I think we didn't talk about the Sony Game Pass competition last week. We could do the great Intel patent kerfuffle. There's no notes for this. Yeah, there's no notes because honestly, it's sort of, it's one of those things that's kind of a nothing story and it's all like kind of on purpose. Underfox came out afterward and said, yeah, this was kind of a social experiment, but basically in a nutshell, Underfox posted this thread uh, since the beginning of 2018, I've been following work of the Hillsboro team uh, at Intel, looking forward to having access to the first patent of the disruptive new architecture that was being developed. In 2019, this patent was finally published. Upon analyzing it, I was shocked by what I saw and certain that the patent would never be granted in the state in which it was presented because if you look at many of the diagrams in the patent application, they are literally block-for-block block <laughs> copies of AMD's Zen microarchitecture presentation from August 2016. 
<laughs> That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> like literally word for word and it goes on and on and on <laughs> someone just went through the zen microarchitecture presentation and recreated <laughs> these diagrams arrow for arrow box for box text for text in some cases um and what ultimately happened is and Intel has actually responded to this and under Fox has come out and said, yes, I understood this. Dr. Ian Cutras had a look at it and was like, okay, this is actually um, not as crazy as it seems. I responded because this was flagged to me where I basically went, whoa, 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 this is so brazen. I'm having a hard time believing it's real. And he kind of goes, okay, hold on a second. Here, have a look at this. Here's the actual patent. It's a patent for something unrelated. And those AMD slides were used as an example of existing CPU microarchitecture that Intel's actual thing that they are patenting could be applied to why Intel used an AMD CPU architecture deck instead of their own um, is perhaps a deeper question. <laughs> Dr. Cutress's take is an intern's summer project. Oh, okay. Said intern took generic CPU architecture slides and ended up with AMD. Actual patent covers some minor thing to do with security and monitoring. So it could just be that like... <laughs> Someone, whether for the lulls or out of ignorance or carelessness or laziness or I, I don't know, what, whatever the reason was, they applied for an Intel patent using a bunch of AMD drawings and it's not a big deal and it's okay. <laughs> but there was certainly a small blow up on the internet when these slides and diagrams were first brought up and compared against each other. So I just thought, I thought it was funny, and I wanted to talk about it. Oh, we need to talk about AMD accidentally giving you more gigahertz for free. The original article here, or at least the article we're citing, is from Tom's Hardware. AMD has confirmed that its GPU drivers are overclocking CPUs without asking. Over the past few weeks, some Ryzen users noticed changes in the BIOS that they had never approved. And upon investigation by the community, it was found that the source of the unrequested overclocks was actually AMD's own GPU drivers. In September of last year, AMD added a Ryzen master module to their Adrenaline GPU drivers to make the process of overclocking your Ryzen CPU and AMD GPU as simple as the press of a button. Previously, it required both Ryzen master and the GPU driver to be installed. But with the new drivers, applying a GPU profile can now alter your BIOS settings to enable automatic overclocking, which, as you may know, voids your warranty. Typically, when overclocking through Ryzen Master or Adrenaline drivers, you're greeted by a disclaimer that warns you you will be breaking your warranty, but the disclaimer was not being shown in this case. Furthermore, not all systems are prepared for overclocks, and this could result in thermal throttling, shortened product lifespan, or stability issues, which could result in a worst-case scenario in failed hardware or the loss of data. AMD has acknowledged the issue and is currently investigating, but as of their most recent driver update on April the 5th, there is no word from Team Red on whether the issue has been resolved. I think it's mostly not a huge deal, but it does go to show just how much trust we're giving these companies and how much control they potentially have over our systems. Yeah. That they can just like overclock it without you actually knowing. Pretty wacky. Well, I mean, we're seeing that sort of across the board right now too, because you get it with phones and all this other stuff. 100%. All right. Mr. Bellavance, if you please. From Braden. Actually, wait, I lied. We have to revisit something here, Luke. This was not the blowout that you thought it was. No, you weren't supposed to go back to it. I went back to it. You weren't it. supposed to see... Oh, straw poll wasn't supposed to work. It's supposed to stay at 100% forever. I still think it's broken because this 974 here is the same 974 that it was I'm when it was sure, just sure all that. And I'm sure it still is. Yeah. So I, I'm sure it's there were a lot more votes than this, but it's just very clear that this was not 
as one sided. I knew it wasn't going to be a 100% yeah, blow up. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, it wasn't even. I knew it was still correct, mm, though. Mm, mm, <laughs> yeah, it's debatable. This is a flawed tool. Flawed tool. Okay, what sorry. What did you say, Daddy? Mr. Mr. Bellavance. Uh, just for the record, I'm with Luke. Uh, Daddy <laughs> is weird, but it is positive. Yeah. Uh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as Braden was saying, the jump from 2D to 3D rendering in games was an upgrade in both visuals and gameplay. Same to the jump to VR, visuals as well as gameplay. Do you think ray tracing can offer any advancements in gameplay, or is it really only a visual upgrade? I think they're very small. In the same way that you know, physics, real-time physics, was supposed to deliver huge improvements in gameplay, in some games it has. Destructible environments absolutely added essential, I would say, essential gameplay elements to, say, for example, the Battlefield series. Um, as for Absolutely. how much of the destructible environment um, progress that was made actually came about because of real-time physics, um, that's, a, whew, that's a spicier topic. But yeah. I do see the potential for you know real-time ray tracing to allow you to, say, for example, in a stealth game, peek around a corner using yeah, a shiny object you picked up or something like that. But I think it's going to be... Uh, uh, yeah, polish, you know, a level of polish on your game, not, um, you know, critical fun enhancing. Not like enabling new gameplay styles. Yeah, or or like core, core gameplay elements that are going to make this the game of the year. You know what I mean? That's that's the way that I see it right now. Also, I take issue with your assertion that the move to from 2D to 3D necessarily improved gameplay. Eventually, yes. Immediately, there were some misfires. Oh yeah! As someone who lived through that, transition. we didn't figure out how the the best way to make people move in 3D was for like a while, long time, like a whole generation of consoles. Like yeah. it was, it was, yeah. Kind of took a sec. <laughs> From Joseph, what's your opinion on whole home wireless charging? We charge your similar, maybe for your new house. We'd love to see a video on it. Sorry, which one are similar? Uh, we charge. We charge. Uh, where do I find this one? We I don't charge see Joseph. or similar. I think he was saying Joseph. It is a long distance or long range wireless charger. Uh, okay. So we have actually showcased similar technology on the channel. I don't know if it was we charge or something else. For me, uh, I'd love to see wireless charging just kind of magically happen as you're just walking around your house. But because it requires line of sight, um, I just, and because the modules are currently not at a low enough cost or small enough size to be properly integrated into devices like this, I just, I, I don't see, I don't see a path forward for it right now. It feels like it's kind of stuck in that cool enough to not forget about it, but not, revolutionary enough to um you know really band together consolidate the industry and push it forward that's where i'm at on it from ling fei have you still been using your lg tone free earbuds and still sleeping with them any updates i switch between the airpods pros and the tone free fp8s i still find both of them extremely comfortable i do find the airpods pros slightly more comfortable but as long as I don't do two nights in a row with the Tone Freeze, uh, they, they don't bother me at all. And I love that the battery life is a lot longer than my AirPods Pros. So that's where, that's where I'm at on those. Maybe a question for Luke. Alexander asks, what's the best keyboard for someone with big hands who likes tall, clicky feeling keys, but doesn't want them to make any noise? Does that exist? Whoa. Uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's kind of multiple questions. You're asking for a lot. Yeah, there's there's a lot of yeah. lot of sub questions in there. Um, you're not looking for clicky, so that kind of narrows down your your switch selection. But at the same time, even in the non clicky space, there's a huge amount of preferential things that I can't tell you what you're going to like. Um, in terms of tall, um, just get like normal size keycaps, I guess. Um, and then you're asking for an entire keyboard. Um, so yeah, I would just, cause I can't tell you what switch you're going to like. So I would just find a non clicky switch that you want to try and just buy a keyboard keyboard with standard keycaps because most standard keycaps are tall. I mean, um, if you want it to feel clicky, but not be loud, something like an MX Brown 
something in that kind of quiet quiet tactile category might be nice there are also yeah if, if you're if you want tactile there are also ones out there that are more tactile but still quiet um than browns um but but yeah unfortunately there's a huge amount of like subjectivity there and like big yeah. hands doesn't really come into play with any of it um because they should be standard spacing yeah if it's a proper keyboard yeah so man man as soon as you mentioned cherry mx browns freaking Look, I still like them. I don't even care. You mentioned them. I know, but as soon as you mention them, oh, like yeah, yeah, yeah. people just a war starts. You can thank you can thank Glarses for that. <laughs> <laughs> I like them. Whatever. Uh, I'm actually using the G915 these days, though. I yeah, it's, I don't know how to go back. I'm using it at work and at home now. I really like, uh, and again, someone with big hands. I really like low prof profile keyboards. I find. Okay, uh, in pure like satisfaction of typing, I do not like them the most, but I am way faster on them. They're like, good. Just objectively, I type significantly faster. They're good. Them. Okay, uh, float plane chat is blowing up asking about the labs lead. Unfortunately, the labs lead had a personal thing to attend to today. It'll be next week. I'm so sorry. Also, the last PC build guide you'll ever need is not coming out this weekend because Mark, who was supposed to finish it up today, ended up getting tapped for shooting duty with me and Jake at my house doing the projector video. So both of the promises that I made last week on WAN show are not coming true. Nice. Sorry about that. Solid. <laughs> Solid. We're still not making pre-orders. <laughs> All right, pal. <laughs> uh, from Evan. If you could go back and change one thing business-wise about your LTT or NTIX experiences, would there be anything or what would it be? Ooh, man. That's a big one. What would you change about us? Uh, it's hard because I try not to think that way too much because if you think that way a lot you're just gonna wallow in regret constantly and that's not actually a productive thing to do um, wow luke with the life tips here i'm just saying you know um you you can reflect on actions and like try to use those to inform future actions but saying that changing the past would necessarily be a good thing is is questionable um hmm i think with float plane to talk about float plane either starting off plan with with the knowledge and the planning that we were going to be more general or starting off harder sure because and th this is one of those things where like we didn't have the there, it was impossible for us to know this we were going to run into this when we started flowplane we had no competition and now our competition is patreon video and youtube memberships which are pretty monstrous competitors um so having no competition we were like oh we can just like keep it lean and mean and We'll we have time. There. Yeah. We ran um, out of time. We ran out of time. Yeah. So knowing that we are going to either be multidisciplinary, which I think is great, or pushing maybe harder at the beginning, I think would have maybe both been better. But then at the same time, like the road that we went on left us with a very skilled development team that was able to scale and end up doing fantastic things later on. So maybe doing those things would have been detrimental. I don't know. Um, so yeah, I don't know. That's a, a somewhat of a non-answer, but... Yeah. yeah, as for Linus Media Group, um, man, I, again, I, there are things we absolutely could have done differently or better. I could have hired earlier. I could have, um, man, I don't think I could have put in more hours, honestly, especially in the early days. Yeah, no. Um, we, we got by, like, we, we just, like, barely dodged so many disasters so this, that like, like i this is even more of a non-answer but i would almost say there's things that like oof, i don't know if it was luck or effort but i'm really happy they went the way they did yeah like when we got kicked out of the house we were using as a studio right as we had already closed on a proper commercial space so like we were gonna have somewhere to go was so narrow like yeah like i i i, I should oh. i shouldn't have done it earlier because it didn't hamper our growth in any way to be there and I definitely shouldn't have done it later because we would have literally been thrown out on the street. But like, what else can it, you know? And so the major moves like that, what, what could I have changed? Yeah. No, Nothing. Yeah. I'm not saying I did everything perfectly. 
Absolutely not. But I then you taken have a different to, path. You have to sometimes fail to learn. Yeah. So like I think the things where mistakes happened, I think because I would like to say that we were productive about those mistakes. I think I wish I had I had know. a better vision. But then like that's that's like impossible, right? So like how well, I don't know. Sort of. I mean, some people, you know, look at the vision Mr. Beast has, for example. I, I didn't have but a that, vision like that. But that was never you. And I think that's okay. Well, I just mean like I he he has a path. I didn't have a path. I I was like, best case scenario, we've got like four or five people and we're self sufficient. I did, I wasn't even thinking I think, about the company <laughs> being profitable at that point. I just meant like we'll be able to pay everyone's salary and we'll like grow out and play with tech. That was that was my end game. I think you exchanged that goal though, because like at one point, like you said, that was your end game, and then we sort of got there, and then we were like, no, the stars. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, man, maybe, maybe that was a mistake. Maybe I should have taken my time. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know at the end of the day what I'm going to look It's hard to evaluate what the result of those changes would be. Um, SJ Watt says, should have invested in crypto. Okay, sure. But that's not like to do with running our business. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that is fair. Though. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> not that I'm saying that you should go in now. I don't, I don't even, I don't know. I don't want to get involved. I only have what we've mined in the lounge for like pizza nights, which we now do every two weeks. You got to start coming. I didn't even know that. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, Chase organizes it. And so we're going to, so what we're going to do is we're going to rotate it so that it happens on different weeknights on each cycle. Oh, that's pretty cool. So that everyone should kind of get a chance to come at some point or another. Yeah, I like that actually. From Sean, uh, any updates on the Steam Deck daily driver video? I've kind of given up. <laughs> I just like I gamed on it a lot. And um, every time I've used anything else, I have just used my computer because it's for work. And it, I don't I'm not doing I'm not doing work things um, in Linux right now. And then after that, I like actually haven't gamed much lately. And so it's just not really a video anymore, I think. So that's where I'm at on that. Sorry. <laughs> Crap, that's now three broken promises today. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> okay, softball question for you uh, after maybe that hard one. From Liz, any upcoming games that you're excited about? Uh, yes. Uh, where is it? It's in my Trello. I'll have to check my... I have a personal Trello for like games to play. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> So, so wait, is this is this a game that's already out? No, it's not out yet. Okay. It's upcoming. upcoming. You have to pick an upcoming. I, it was just if it's in your Trello, I didn't know if it was like actually. I want to play Sea of Stars and Rise of the Third sea Power. Of... They both look awesome. Never heard of either of those. Nice. That's cool. Um, I feel like I've been saying this for I think four years, but I'm still gonna say Skull and Bones. Yeah, whenever it comes out, maybe uh, maybe twenty thirty. We'll see. This looks amazing. Uh, the art looks amazing. I think you showed me this actually. Yep. Yeah. I just, it looks so beautiful. Cool. I just really want to play it. And then what was the other one I said? Sea of Stars and. Uh, I already don't remember. Uh, Rise of the something. Where is it? Uh, come on. Rise of the Third Power. Yeah, it looks amazing. I, <clears throat> I'm not going to pre order, but I am excited. Starfield. If if you told me when I was seventeen that Bethesda was going to make Starfield and it was going to come out when I was around this age, I would have been like, "Wow, I'm excited for future me. That's going to be an amazing game." If you told me in the last few years that Bethesda was going to make any game at all, I don't think I'd be that excited. Yeah. Um, so that's where I'm currently sitting at with Starfield. Hopefully, it's great. I'm going in with extremely low expectations. And I suspect that they might uh, land below that. So I'm I'm concerned. But this, this looks like another cross code where it's like the game that I would fund if I started a game studio. Because this is just like what I want to play. I want a super story driven, like 16 bit style. Um, wait, coming February 10th, 2022. Did they? Did, is, is this available or did they miss that? <laughs> um. Uh, is this out? 
This is out. Oh, oh, I'm totally gonna play it. Nice. Cool. I'm excited. Oh, it's deck verified. Heck yeah, I'm gonna buy it tonight. All right. <clears throat> there you go. All right, hit me. All right, from Joshua. What were the best and worst parts of working at NC NCIX, and how are they different from founding and heading Linus Media Group? Hmm. Uh, okay. Best and worst parts of work. Okay, the best part of working at NCIX is that I basically got a, a, a business education while being paid to do it. I am extremely glad that when I played the game of life, I took a gamble and I skipped school and I went straight into a business that was big enough that there was a lot to learn and knowledgeable people to absorb from, but small enough that I could legitimately affect change and make my way to the top of the company in a span of just you know four or five years. Um, I am super grateful for my time at NCIX. I, I definitely worked hard to make the most of it. They didn't hand me anything, but, um, I was given the opportunity to become more knowledgeable, uh, more patient, um, to learn how to take risks, to learn how to calculate my risks. Uh, so many of the things, both what to do and what not to do. So, so many of the things that I now consider just core parts of myself, even though they weren't, I learned at NCIX. Um, you know, things like our, our summer, you know, summer of fun. I ripped off the whole thing <clears throat> directly from NCIX, even the name. Uh, so we just have, uh, in the summer, we do a budget per, per employee. Uh, and you can, as long as you have what it's some minimum number of LMG, Creator Warehouse, or Float Plane employees that all do the activity, then you can write off up to a certain amount per get together just to encourage people to do stuff that's fun together outside of work hours and also even do stuff that they otherwise might not. Like maybe you wouldn't go go karting because it's like pretty expensive. It is. Yeah. But if it's free and the only cost is that you like have to hang out with colleagues, well, hey, oh, sure, yeah, I'll go go karting. So uh, that was ripped off directly from NCIX. And then the part of that that I learned not to do from NCIX is um, unceremoniously terminate a program like that <laughs> without replacing it with something else. My uh, my least favorite part was getting paid below minimum wage. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I don't know. I feel like I was so detached from the actual company other than getting paid below minimum wage that I don't have a lot of particularly favorite parts about working with NCIX. Hanging out with me? It was basically just hanging out with Linus. <laughs> no one else there even knew who the hell I was. Yeah, that's true. Like, <laughs> I, I didn't, like, interface with the company Well, you usually at all. showed up, like, after hours. Everybody was gone. Yeah. yeah. It was just, like, you and me. Yeah. They're late. <laughs> yeah. I'd enter the studio directly. Like, I usually didn't even come in the front doors. We'd, like, wander around the warehouse and, like, grab things every once in a while. Like, I knew I could probably, like, map out the layout of headquarters now. Because I remember, like, I moved around the building a fair amount, but no one was yeah. ever there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. And then for me, I'd say the worst part was dealing with people that I, whose skills I didn't respect. People who I felt were in jobs that they were not qualified for and ended up wasting a lot of mine and the company's resources. I don't like waste. I don't mind spending but i hate waste that's what i've told every labs person who has joined so far is your job is to think pontificate plan because there's no website to publish to <laughs> so your job is to do all of these things spend money don't waste it is what, I, what i've told them yeah hit me again all right from anonymous what's your most underrated battle station upgrade hmm I think that monitor upgrades, it's people understand it now, but back in the day, a monitor upgrade was considered like kind of the last thing you would do. You know what? No, I'm changing my answer. Mouse pad. And that's not just because we sell mouse pads. We sell mouse pads because I'm super picky about mouse pads because I was the kind of person that used a piece of paper for many years of my life. And when I finally got a good mouse pad, 
boy, did it ever make a huge difference for me. And I've been a believer ever since. Um, I, every once in a while, I'll end up traveling and I'll forget to bring a mouse pad and I'll get handed some stupid like freebie mouse pad because most companies don't invest in proper mouse pads for their workstations. And it just, it sucks. I hate it because a proper mouse pad makes a big difference to the comfort of your arm. It makes... The, having a little bit of cushion, it just feels it feels better. It tracks better, so you're not going to misclick when you're aiming for something small. You're moving quickly. Yeah, I'm going with mouse pad. Yeah, I'm going to kind of cop out and just say general peripherals as well. Back when I was a kid, and I was trying to get Terrible into answer. I was trying to get into Counter Strike and and Call of Duty like pro teams. Uh, I was on this I was on this Counter Strike team. And our lead, we didn't have a coach, but our like best Nerd. player would do these work, would do these workshops with people. Uh, Sorry. And he was trying to like train us to like aim properly and do all this kind of yeah. stuff. And he would dive into our mice and our like keyboards and and mouse pads and stuff. Right. And this was like this was way long ago. I was like fourteen or thirteen or something. Um, and he would like if anyone had a wired mouse, he'd be like, "Dude, no," because this was back when wired mice weren't very good. Um, Wireless, you mean? Yes, sorry. Okay. If, if if people had wireless mice, he's like, dude, yep. no. Um, and he would he would go over consistency like crazy and all this stuff. And I I noticed pretty early on, like everything he's focusing on is peripherals and our way that we interact with the game. Right. And people that had lower performance computers, it was like, yeah, that wasn't great. But what he was way more focused on was how we controlled our our actions and stuff. Right. And it's, I mean, he was right in a lot of ways. I'm gonna come up with another one. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. Underrated big deal when you're comfortable you're focused yeah, when you're point. not comfortable you're not focused and actually that's funny uh bells like why not our sponsor secret lab yeah chair is another big part of being comfortable while you're gaming yeah i think i agree with chair except i spent like a pretty high portion of my life sitting on exercise balls yeah and i, I thought know. that was great so well i don't know yeah <laughs> awful gaming on an exercise ball yeah i don't even want to talk about it uh bell <laughs> Uh, from Tyler, what hardware features or changes can you absolutely not get behind? Oh, uh, well, I mean, an obvious one would be hole punches or notches in displays. I went out of my way to completely avoid that stupid trend. Um, man, can you absolutely not get behind? I'm trying to think. I'm sure there's some, but I'm trying to think. subscription hardware where oh, you have to pay for both the hardware and the subscription mentioned that earlier I, i'm kind of a pick a, i'm a pick a lane kind of guy i don't mind paying a subscription for something i don't mind paying up front i don't like both yeah yeah if you're gonna subsidize your shiz then fine subsidize it what else conrad says light gaming mice bell says non-removable power cables apple i mean i hope that's not a trend but i was kind of trying to think trends Anything yeah, anti rights repair we don't like changes. Yeah. Oh, this is it. This is not an absolutely cannot get behind, but I'm not a fan of it. And I understand it's probably progress. It's probably better. Um, but the overclockability of things trending downwards. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's probably better that things are just as fast as they can be out of the box, but it does make it more boring. Yeah. It's hilarious to me that water cooling is a bigger industry than it's ever been even though there is less point in water cooling than there has ever been. Yeah. Uh, Vaughn, we're on the last merch message. She needs to go, and I need to go. Um, and I guess that's it then. Uh, I feel like I should give you guys a final tally here. Um, so far, there are... This is so stupid. Uh, I mean, like, stupid in a... Hey, thanks, guys. Y'all are great. There are 558 of you that are actually going to wear lttstore.com nice. on the front of you. And um, thank you for that. Uh, cable ties are low-key one of our top-selling items now that we have all the different colors and the larger packs. Oh, that's cool. Um, so that's pretty cool. You guys, you guys want some inside baseball? You want a little bit inside baseball before we go? Uh, desk pads and water bottles continue to be some of our biggest movers. I, I love our water bottles. I think they're great. I had a conversation with Kyle about why you're not allowed to uh, dishwash them. I was like, hey, um, I've always wondered about this because if there's a vacuum in there, like the heat surely couldn't cause a pressure problem. And he's like, no, it's a melting issue. The way that they seal the vacuum is with a glass bead that they melt into here. And the problem is that when it heats up and expands, 
and then cools and contracts, glass and metal do not heat up and expand at the same rate, and that's why these thermally insulated water bottles are not safe to put in the dishwasher. Makes sense. It's not that it's like going to explode or something. It's just that it will could damage it. And I have run Less them. Effective. And they have not been damaged, but it's not a guarantee. So that's why we say that you can't do it. Yeah, yeah. And I've seen people complaining about how our water bottles are not dishwasher safe. No insulated water bottle should go in the dishwasher. So anyone that you are putting in that is also insulated, you're doing that contrary to the manufacturer's guidance. You just don't realize it probably because we try to be really upfront about that kind of stuff. All right. I think that's pretty much it. We will see you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Oh, uh, that didn't work. Uh, okay. Uh, burp. Burp.